There has been another bug discovered in the Linux kernel that has been around for many years, and only now is it in the early stages of getting fixed. This particular bug has existed for about eight years, which you know, compared to some of the other vulnerabilities that have been discovered in the Linux ecosystem over the past year, doesn't actually seem like it's that long. Now, this particular vulnerability is one that allows for privilege escalation to root on vulnerable systems. So it doesn't necessarily give somebody a window to get into your desktop or your server. They still have to find a way to gain unprivileged access, that initial foothold. But privilege escalation is still a very big deal because if someone does get root on your system, they can now do whatever they want. And I actually think privilege escalation is an even bigger deal on Linux systems because most of the Linux systems out there, not counting Android devices, of course, are servers. Pretty much every website and web app out there on the internet is running on one or more Linux servers. And a lot of those servers, especially those ones that are belonging to large companies, have a lot of users that are accessing those boxes in different ways. And this is where the design of Linux usually really shines. You have users and groups and file permissions and access restrictions that can be applied to those users and groups. This is really good for companies that provide some kind of service, like let's say cloud storage as an example. You might have a Linux box or really several Linux boxes in practice for redundancy, but let's just say to keep things simple, it's one rack mounted server running Linux with a bunch of hard drives that are connected to it. So you're gonna have engineers who are making sure, their job is to make sure that this server has the latest updates, that all the software is updated, they'll do kernel upgrades, they'll change out hard drives whenever they fail or to you know, add more storage that's available to the pool and so on. Now to do all of that, they're gonna need root access or they're at least going to need privileges that will let them do a lot of that maintenance work that'll let them you know, restart daemons and resize the available uh, storage pool and so on. And then you're gonna have customer facing employees that basically act as sales reps. So they're not doing a lot of technical work. They're basically selling this cloud storage by the gigabyte to customers. And then once they process a payment, they then need to remote into a box and provision however many gigabytes the customer paid for. Or you might just have a separate person, maybe like some kind of a provisioning analyst who just does that job and doesn't even talk to the customers to have further separation. Uh, but nothing else, right? You only want these people to be able to do those very specific things and nothing more. We don't want sales reps to try doing kernel upgrades or create users or stop services, nothing like that. Uh, so yeah, when you stop to consider how many people might have access to a Linux box out there with just low level privileges, and you realize that this exploit could allow any of them to pretty easily get root, now you start to see how serious of a vulnerability something like this is and that there are so many opportunities for attack. And because it's a pretty universal kernel exploit, like for example, it works on different architectures. It works on pretty much any technology that's built from Linux. So this would probably work for attacking Docker containers as well since Docker uses the host OS's kernel and it's typically gonna be installed on a Linux host. And I've also seen people say that this vulnerability could affect Android devices, uh, which obviously that's really bad because so many people have them because uh, that's also based on Linux. And this exploit is able to bypass the control flow integrity or CFI that is built into Android's kernel. So the root problem with this bug is a use after free vulnerability that allows an attacker to swap their unprivileged credentials with privileged ones. And those can be credentials that are belonging to either a task or to a file. So we have some of the slides here that are provided by the security researchers. They presented this at Black Hat 2022. Not sure if there is a video of it, but I will leave a link to these slides in the description of this video if you wanna check those out. 
Uh, so here you can see this is basically simulating memory that is on the system. So there's freed memory here, and then you have uh, memory for different tasks that are belonging to uh, the bad guy here who may be got remote access, like unpriv unprivileged remote access to the system, or again, it could be an inside job, right? It could be uh, one of those lower privilege employees. So we have, um, we have free memory, we have the unprivileged, and then we also have the privilege. So this is where uh, anything that's running as root is gonna be, any of those tasks are gonna be in a privileged block of memory. So what our attacker is gonna do now is he's going to free up some of that memory that one of his unprivileged tasks were using. So this is gonna become freed up memory. And then what we're gonna do is wait for a privileged task to use that freed memory. Now you might be thinking, oh, isn't this going to take forever? I have to wait for a system admin or something like that to do something and then hope that it used this memory that I freed specifically? Not exactly. So here I have, um, this is a virtual machine that's running Gen 2. It, this will work for any Linux distro. I'm just doing this because uh, there's very, like you can see, there's very little running on it, so it'll make this easier to see. Uh, here I'm running HTOP as root, and then on, I think it's TTY2, yeah, so I have this user Greg. So Greg, is just in the group Greg, and um, if I try to do sudo, then you see that he's not in the uh, sudoers file. Uh, but when I do that sudo vim, and I go back here, you can see that it just created a process, okay, that's running as root, and it's using some memory. And so you see right now we're at 60 megs of memory that we're using. Well, if I go back over here, I can uh, stop that job and then do it again and again. You get the idea. But then if I come back over here, whoa, look at that. <laughs> There's all of these extra processes that I've spawned running as root, they're using memory, and now we're using an additional six megs of memory. So you can just keep doing that over and over again. In fact, you can script that. So you can just have a script that'll keep trying to run uh, sudo, su, sshd, any type of privilege process, uh, and just you know kind of let it hang like that and start using up memories, and eventually, it'll use up this memory that you freed here. Now, you're able to start operating as a privileged user. So that's how to do it with um, struct cred using tasks, but you can do the same thing with um, open file credentials. So I'll show you how that goes down here. So you write content to a file on a disk and Permission will be granted if you're in a directory that you're allowed to edit and everything like that. So this is basically the contents that he's writing, and then this is the result of the permission check saying that he's got read and write access. So then you're going to free the file object after the checks have happened, so after you get that this is good, but before you actually write it to the disk. And so now, you have this file object that's kind of just floating there, right? Like we see the string that he wants to uh, write to it. We see that he has the permissions, but there's, you know, it's just pointing to a free memory space. So then you get a read-only file into that same memory space. And this one here is Etsy password. So normally you would only be able to read that. You can't write to it. That gets allocated to this space. And then this file check that was already done gets applied to it. And since the system said that he has read and write access, it's now going to give him access to uh, Etsy password. And he already has a string that was going to be written to it. Because I believe that this one's a one-off. Uh, so you have to sort of preload the um, string. I mean, you can script this too. So when I say a one-off, it's 
you know, one off for every cycle of the exploit. Um, but yeah, he's got the string that's preloaded. So what this is actually going to do is it's going to write hacked uh, into that password file, I believe, on line six. And this could be done to, say, edit the sudoers file. You know, this could be done to edit what group your user is in to put you into the root group. And then from there, you can just arbitrarily execute any command that you want as root. And the people behind the write-up also have a proof of concept malware uh, that utilizes a similar exploit. I believe it was this one. Uh, yeah, this one that uh, has since been fixed, but similar exploit that was discovered last year. Uh, and they've got the VM where you can actually test it out. So I'll go ahead and show you guys how that works. Uh, go ahead and connect Netcat. And um, this might take a little while to connect because it's just a little like low um, resource system. And you guys can connect to this too. I mean, well, after this video goes live, everyone and their mother might try to connect to it. So <laughs> maybe you'll have to wait a couple of days or use one of the other VMs, something like that. Uh, so the user is low, password is low. And um, this, so you can see this is Ubuntu 20.0.4 LTS, and it's running kernel 5.4. So like this isn't super up to date, but this also isn't super out of date either, right? Like this is still fairly modern. There's gonna be lots of production systems that are running this, uh, you know, CentOS systems and so on. We'll be running this older kernel that's not patched. Um, so what do we have? We've got um, this. I've just got to make, um, yeah, I should be able to just make it and then run. Oh, let me do this. Etsy password. All right. So you can see that this file is not modified. Okay, this is a, a not modified Etsy password. But after I run dirty cred, it's going to automatically change it. And that one actually went fast. I've done this before, um, just to like test out before I uh, ran it and like recorded it. And sometimes it has to go through a few cycles to you know, make it run. Like I was telling you before, you script it so that you don't have to constantly spawn new tasks or spawn new files. But yeah, this one went quick. And so it just did, it just wrote out Etsy password. I'll just do it again here to show you. Uh-oh. <laughs> we were able to write to Etsy password. And again, you can write to any arbitrary file that you want. You can program this to write you in as a root user. Uh, the script is not even super complicated. Like if I go to the, uh, where is it? Yeah, demo, and here we go, EXPC. A few hundred lines of C code, you know what I mean? And again, it works on any architecture uh, that Linux will work on multiple kernel types. I'm sure like if you had the Zen kernel, it'd work just fine on it as well. So yeah, the uh, Dirty Cred, which gets its name from, I, I believe Dirty Cow was the first one, which if I'm not mistaken, it was also taking advantage of file permission problems with opening files. Um, that's, it, it comes from this family, Dirty Cow. And then there was another one I think earlier this year called Dirty Pipe, that this was also kind of similar to, but it's even more universal and even easier to uh, utilize than Dirty Pipe. So we've got this big problem. How do we mitigate it? Well, there aren't really any mitigations uh, for the newer exploit, okay? So if I go to um, uh, this one here, which, um, let me just bring up the Red Hat link. Okay, so mitigation uh, for 
this version of the vulnerability. Currently, there aren't any, at least there aren't any that meet the uh, Red Hat product security criteria. But generally, what these security researchers are recommending to mitigate this is to use virtual memory, use uh, vmalloc, that way you're not going to have any cross-cache attacks. So I don't know if the Linux kernel has been patched yet to fix this particular version. Um, not gonna go through all of the uh, recent patches to the kernel, but you know, it gets patches every day. Uh, I would expect it to come out sooner rather than later. But the good thing about all this, I guess the silver lining is the open nature of the Linux kernel is going to make confirming when these bugs get patched much easier. The kernel is a gigantic project after all. It's got millions of lines of code and more are getting added every day. So more bugs are surely going to be discovered within the kernel and there's probably gonna be more very old bugs, maybe even over a decade old that are found, but that's fine because everything is open. So when a bug is fixed, we can verify that it's fixed and not just take some company's word about it, that it's been fixed. Like and comment to hack the algorithm. Follow me on Odyssey and have a great day.